Welcome to module number two for the MISD Transportation Department. We're going to go over the handbook and we're going to uh, highlight the things especially relevant for um, you who are um, enrolling into this class and you are required to because you have been asked by your athletic coordinator or an athletic director or you might be another uh, MISD employee um, associated with an activity that requires you to drive a school bus um, because you have uh, certain responsibilities in uh, transporting students for specific activities that you might be in charge of. Um, so what we're going to do is go over our MISD transportation handbook and we do want you to know as a driver for the independent uh, Mansfield Independent School District um, the entire handbook is something that you will need to be um, familiar with I do want you to know that uh, a lot of stuff in the handbook particularly is uh, in essence going to be something that um, uh, you can actually um, well what I guess just realize that not everything in here is going to be relevant to you. A lot of it's going to be relevant to, say, transportation employees. And so what I want to do is go through this information um, with you who are basically we, what we call coaches in our transportation department and just highlight the things that are relevant um, to you. Um, this is the acknowledgement of the handbook that you will have or should have already signed um, up at the top there. The year will change um, every year because sometimes we make certain minor adjustments, updates, and things like like that that are relevant but for the most part it stays the same but um, we will be asking you if you haven't already to sign this um, acknowledging that you have received this um, and this is the table of contents regarding the transportation handbook and really, I just want you to be familiar with the entire handbook. Um, I, I'm not going to go over every single detail, but uh, this is the table of contents that you can refer back to. And um, it's also online in the transportation department. Um, website. If you go to misd.com and look under departments and, and click on the transportation tab and you will find the employee um, handbook and it will be updated every single year. As we move forward, what I want to do is highlight um, each of the sections and uh, I may stop down on each section and uh, highlight um, each particular um, issue that I want to bring to your attention. The first thing is, is obviously the responsibility that uh, you have as an MISD um, school bus driver. Um, it is your responsibility responsibility to make sure that you have and maintain a current DOT physical, also a valid Texas CDL with a PNS endorsement and an up-to-date state certification. Um, we do a lot of work to make sure and contact you um, when those things are getting ready to expire, but even if we don't, um, I just want you to be aware that this is all your responsibility. We have a really good training department that stays up to date on this, and most of the time uh, we, we're able to take care of all that but you are responsible to make sure that um, that is taken care of also any unsafe operation of your bus or failure to follow district or department transportation procedures resulting in a citation or this is a big one a student left unsupervised for any length of time or an at-fault accident resulting in injury will be grounds for termination of employment and this while that may apply specifically to our school bus drivers um, who drive their regular routes we want you to understand that things like citations or leaving students on a bus unsupervised, um, those are pretty big deals for us. So whenever you're driving and taking a trip out, uh, make sure you're observing all the laws. Make sure uh, also that uh, you're not letting students stay on the bus without anybody um, supervising them. Um, when you're off the bus, the students need to be off the bus, um, and then they don't need to be getting on the bus until you have come back to that uh, space and, and uh, gotten them ready for that. But uh, that's a big thing that we just wanted to open up with. Um, some other things. Things we want to just touch base on is bus driver qualifications. You do have to be 21 years of age in addition to having all the proper credentials that we just talked about. Um, but um, uh, you have to be at least 21 years of age and uh, hopefully uh, you are here and you already know that you've got that taken care of. We're also going to ask you to make sure you uh, keep up to date with your state certification and or recertification. Um, if you're here for the first time um, and you've never uh, gotten your CDL or commercial driver's license, you're going to have to go through a 20-hour course. Um, we do pay for that course, but uh, it will require a 20 hours of your time, and you'll have to go through a state Texas school bus driver safety training course. And um, it's uh, pretty informative information in addition to the training you're going to receive with us. But I do want you to be aware that uh, that is um, uh, good for three calendar years. And then after that, you'll have to go to recertification every three years, and that's an eight-hour course thereafter. But um, the state certification and recertification uh, 
um, is very important. We got to take care of all of that, and that'll something that we will um, help make sure. Hopefully, that you'll we'll be in touch with you and ask you to please make sure that uh, that that is uh, something you comply to. Here's just some more information about that on page five um, with the state certification. Um, you don't need to worry about the excessive absenteeism and tardy tardiness. That is something relevant to our drivers. But I do want to talk to you about per personal appearance and dress code. Um, some of these may not be relevant to you because you're already observing a dress code at your particular campus. I do want to highlight, um, you know, we do want you to make sure that you have your ID badge on you so you can identify yourself as a uh, school bus driver or, excuse me, an employee of Mansfield Independent School District. We do want you to also make sure you always have your license with you, your state certification, and your physical, but make sure you have your ID badge with you as well. Um, also, this is a safety issue in regards to our dress code here. We do need you to constantly be wearing shoes or drive whenever you're driving uh, making sure you're wearing shoes that cover the entire foot or provide full foot protection no sandals crocs flip-flops ballerina style flats or heels um, we're especially talking to probably some of the coaches uh, uh, the lady female coaches that um, you've been excited and you've had a great year and you want to go to you have a say a playoff uh, basketball tournament or something that you're going to or whatever the case may be um, and it you want to dress up and look extra sharp or whatever and that's fine um, um, but please make sure that when you do, um, if you are the one driving the bus, that you make sure that you have an extra sh pair of shoes that are appropriate for driving a school bus. Um, it's not just one of our requirements. It's a law that we do not, that we have to have proper foot attire when you're driving that uh, a school bus. So make sure that you have a backup pair for driving um, if you're wanting to look extra sharp and, and have extra nice shoes. Um, also, we're just asking you to make sure that the pants and capris, shorts, um, you know, all those type of things, uh, we are careful. I know jogging and sweatpants and wind pants, some of you might have that uh, extra material from your, um, with your uh, um, organization or whatever. Um, please be uh, aware, especially of just a safety issue with that um, regarding, uh, you know, some of the extra heat that comes out of the exhaust. Um, it could um, literally melt the, uh, m the synthetic material, some of the these uh, um, jogging pants are made out of and could literally melt to your legs. So we just ask that you be aware of the safety um, aspect of what you are wearing. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that you're doing wearing something that's appropriate, but you already know that from the school and campus that you're uh, especially aware of. This is probably a no-brainer for you as well um, as far as the um, clothing and the accessories and the drug emblems and things like that. Um, we do ask you to be careful with the pierced body ornaments as well and then uh, keeping your ha head coverings only due to say baseball caps and things like that um, but uh, this is more or less for our um, department but I do want to highlight some of the safety issues as far as the personal appearance and the dress code is concerned um, we do have different route information ide ideologies, and that really doesn't concern you. But I do want to talk about the drug and alcohol testing here. Um, as a result of you becoming a, a, a driver for the independent school district, we are required by law to enter you into a, a random drug testing protocol. And you will be um, subject to drug, uh, random drug testing. It is 50% uh, um, uh, uh, random drug sampling for drug testing and 25% random sampling for um, alcohol. And then uh, hopefully before you even came here, you've already done what we call the pre-employment drug screening test. But thereafter, you will be um, uh, subject, subject to a random drug testing and we'll contact you um, whenever that comes about. But just be aware that that will be a requirement that you have to um, subject yourself to a, a drug testing or alcohol um, screen testing. But then another occasion we can ask you to um, submit to a drug and alcohol testing is uh, after an accident, but it's not any accident, um, any and every accident. Uh, these are accidents where there's a fatality involved or if there is uh, an injury accident and an issue uh, issued, uh, a moving violation has been occurred or if there is an accident where one or more vehicles has been disabled and required towing and uh, a, a moving violation has occurred, um, we can ask you to um, uh, submit to a drug test. Um, and so just be aware of those type of uh, violations, or not violations, excuse me, but those incidents that we can ask you to um, submit to a drug test. 
And then also um, the conduct violation rules. Um, and this, this includes, basically the bottom line is if you test positive for anything, well, then we can call you in and, and ask you to uh, um, explain or, or ex investigate the matter a little bit further. And then this is kind of a big one we want you to be aware of. Um, drivers shall report to their supervisors the fact that they are taking any prescriptions or over-the-counter medication which may impair their driving abilities. Um, so let's say that uh, you have to get up and you got a soccer tournament or something that you're associated with and you got to leave at 6 a.m., but you took some NyQuil at 4 a.m. to try to finish the rest of your night's sleep, um, that will imply, because there's alcohol in this particular cold medicine, um, that would, I would recommend, not recommend, but we need to under, you, we need you to understand that you will be disqualified from driving that morning simply because there's alcohol in your system. It takes four hours for alcohol to get out of your system, and if you have, um, say, NyQuil in your system that has alcohol in that, you know, you've, you've, you've got to make sure that if you're taking that at four in the morning and you have to leave at six um, that's something that we need to be aware of and so we are asking you to to help us out in that area and you may need to find a backup driver and stuff like that so just be aware of the things like over-the-counter medication as well um, bus driver and attendant responsibilities I just want to highlight a couple of those items here for you and this is a big one right here um, as I look at that uh, drivers must properly complete what we call the DVCR logbook before each, before and after each run uh, or your trip. Uh, the DVCR logbook is to remain on the bus until completely full, at which time the driver will turn it in and uh, to the key room and dispatch and receive a new one. The main thing that we just want you to be aware of is to please make sure you fill this out before and after every trip. There is a duplicate copy. You'll tear out the top white copy, and we'll explain that a little bit more in your training later on down the road. But you will be given a, um, a field trip packet, and that will include all of your information, uh, keys, um, different other uh, pertinent uh, phone numbers you might need to be familiar with. But and whenever you turn in that field trip packet at the end of your trip, uh, you've come back and you've parked the bus, and you're going to put your keys in this field trip packet envelope, you need to put the white copy of the DVACR logbook right here and put that in your field trip packet as well, and you need to turn all of that in. Um, I will say if there's an area that kind of gets gets overlooked by coaches historically it's this item right here we really need to make sure that you've done a a proper um uh, pre-trip and that is exactly what the dvcr logbook is is it confirms that you have done a proper pre-trip on your f school bus you have verified that it is safe to drive and then uh, you get on down the road and so um, please make sure and don't overlook that particular item if, if you don't mind there also bus drivers and attendants are responsible to check their mailbox and email daily um that may not be um, completely relevant to you, but I do want you to be aware that a lot of our communication, especially from uh, our field trip coordinator, Cynthia Mondujano, um, she will communicate a lot through email. So make sure um, that you a lot of, the majority of your communication is through email. So I do want to highlight that particular item uh, as far as that is concerned. Uh, we also ask you to understand that uh, it is your responsibility as a driver to make sure that the interior of the bus is clean and neat at all times, as well as, any, as report any damage on a daily basis. So if you discover something that's wrong with the bus, man, please let us know. Um, if you get on a bus and it was a mess before you even um, t before you even got on the bus and took off, man, bring that to our attention um, because there's somebody that we need to probably visit with about that. But uh, when you come back, and we're not asking you to um, wipe everything down, but you know, just things like uh, um, um, you know uh, any kind of trash or uh, leftover items from your trip, make sure you go through and walk your bus to make sure that it is picked up and, and clean as far as that is concerned. Um, and then uh, th don't worry about that one. That was something that I needed to just kind of delete from your from your last one. But uh, let's move on here. Um, and remember, after every trip, uh, make sure and secure all windows, doors, and latches before leaving the bus. Um, this is very, very important. Um, uh, we don't want to leave our windows open. And let's say that you come in at 10 o'clock at night and you left the driver's side window open and a huge storm comes in. Um, say at three in the morning and then the person that has to drive that bus the following morning on their route comes and sits in a very saturated driver's seat well we have to down that bus because that bus is no longer functional because of a wet driver's seat and so make sure that all windows are secure and doors and latches are taken care of before you leave um, that would help us out um, plus we want to make sure and do the same for you you want to be confident that when you get on a bus nobody has left a window open from the previous night or anything like that we also ask that whenever it says to to run your route as assigned and on time. Um, but what we mean here 
is, is that whenever you take a trip, make sure you're going exactly the way you're supposed to go, where you're supposed to go without making any um, unauthorized stops. And then whenever you get to the school, lo uh, any location, um, whenever you're delivering students to a school or other location, you need to make sure and walk your bus after every single time you stop and empty that bus. Um, I know sometimes you're running a little late and you need to get out there and you need to start warming up or getting prepared for your activity, but please walk from the front of your bus to the back of the bus and making sure, number one, that everybody has gotten off the bus, and number two, making sure all the equipment that you need is, has been removed from the bus as well. Um, and this is kind of a, a, a biggie, especially if you uh, might be somebody who's driving, say, younger students, particularly middle school um, at grades. We want to make sure that nobody's falling asleep on the bus or anything along those lines like that. And then school buses are required to come to a complete stop, placed at neutral, air brake engaged at all railroad crossings. When you go through your training a little bit further um, along down the road, we're going to actually teach you the requirement um, process for this. But please know that when you approach a railroad crossing, there's something significant that needs to happen. You need to come to a complete stop, put that bus in neutral, and you need to, at the very minimum, engage that air brake. And we'll teach you a few other things that you were required to do, but please do not ever cross a railroad cr a railroad track without doing this particular um, um, safety issue as well. I also want to highlight here: backing is a bus is strongly discouraged, and if you need to back up and there and there's no other way, do your best to try to make sure you have somebody helping you back up. Also, I want to highlight that anytime you're driving, your headlights should be in motion, and we don't want to leave our buses um, idling for an extended period of time. It says here five minutes or more. Try to reduce that. Um, but one of the things I want you to be aware of is is that if it's cold, man, let's go ahead and give yourself an extra. 10 minutes to warm up or if it's hot let's go ahead and let that bus start cooling down with an ac that's working and then here's a big one that um uh, I've seen happen time and time again, and that is whenever you park your bus and uh, you get out to your activity and the bus just stays in the ignition or the key stays in the ignition on the school bus. We can never leave that key in the ignition. As soon as everybody gets off that bus, you need to please, as the driver, um, turn that bus off and put that key in your pocket or secure it somewhere else. Sometimes when that key is left in that ignition, um, it may not be completely turned off and it still trickles your battery, and then you get out and get ready to leave after say a three or four hour tournament extension or something like that and your bus is dead and it will not go so please make sure and keep that key with you all of the time and then also buses or district owned vehicles are not to be used for personal business of any kind including stopping at convenience stores donut shops etc etc um just kind of be aware of that particular policy, um, if you don't mind, and, and just uh, be willing to subject yourself to that as well. A lot of this other stuff that you're seeing here, at the, the first seven items we're not going to worry about, but look, look down there at number eight. Video request forms will be attached to all student management referrals. DSRs will approve video requests. A DSR for us here in our department is driver support representative. These are the folks that help us with student discipline issues or um, other items that we need to take care of. What I want you to be aware of is that there are video cameras on our buses. Those video cameras cannot be tampered with. The video equipment cannot be tampered with. But what I do want you to be aware of if there is an incident on your bus that occurs, I want you to be aware that you have video surveillance that you should be able to fall back on and say, okay, um, we need to do an investigation here. And that's something that might be helpful to you in the future to just know that that is there and available in case you need to look forward to something there. Okay. Also, while you're driving, um, this is a big one. Uh, it is illegal for a child to stand on a bus that is in motion. Um, if there's a student standing, you, you just need to pull over or threaten to pull over and say, look, I need you seated because I cannot um, drive this school bus. Uh, here in a little bit later on, you'll see a module that talks about some of these relevant laws and the penalties associated with those laws. Uh, this could come back and, and burn you as a driver. So you really need to make sure that those students are, sta are staying seated while the bus is in motion. I know a lot of them are bigger students, especially if you're an athletic um, uh, school bus or, or coach driving athletes and uh, man we just need to make sure that the majority of this of the student's body is behind a seat in front of them somehow some way um, sometimes they can put one leg out or foot out in the aisle if they need to but uh, we just can't have students standing or being in the aisle of this of the school bus um, because that's uh, simply just a, an unsafe matter there let's talk a little bit about boarding and exiting procedures uh, the main thing is is when anytime you stop and open that door you always need to make sure that that parking brake 
brake is applied and the bus is placed in neutral. That's all there is to it. So if you are knowing and anticipating that you're going to be opening that door, always make sure before you open that door that the parking brake is applied and you put that bus in neutral. Um, that's a very important safety aspect there. Um, some of the loading and unloading procedures. Let's make sure that you're pulling up to the right side of the uh, of the curb there as parallel as possible. Um, you don't necessarily need to use your loading lights, and we'll talk about what those loading lights are in a little bit. Um, please do not load or unload um, next to a street or gutter uh, drainage area. Um, that would be a pretty false um, step for some of your students. And then whenever you are un unloading, secure the bus by applying the parking brake before loading and unlo unloading. If the bus uh, is detained, pull to the front of a loading zone and activate hazard flashers. If what I'm getting at is, is, is if you realize you're um, um, holding up traffic behind you, man, just make sure you're getting out of the way before you have to sit there and wait for um, students to get on or off the bus or whatever. But this right here, as we talked about, it kind of goes back up to this part right here, making sure that anytime you open that door um, before somebody is getting on or off that bus, that you pull that parking brake and you um, uh, put that bus in neutral. And as you get more into your training, if you don't already know what that means, you'll understand that process uh, very easy. Uh, we do have some time information, drop, uh, drop off time, um, pick up times. Don't worry about that. I do want you to be aware of our emergency evacuation procedure. If you should ever find yourself out on the road somewhere and you need to evacuate the bus, um, you do need to be able to ascertain um, that something is, is requiring evacuation. If there's a fire on your bus, you need to evacuate. If you uh, are standing on a, if your bus dies on a railroad track, you need to evacuate your bus. Sometimes staying on the bus, let's say you have a flat tire, but you're pulled over off to the safe, uh, safely on the side of the road, keep the students on the bus because it's more, it's, it's not as safe. It's less safe to be out of the bus in that situation than it is to be on the bus. But if you have to do an emergency evacuation, make sure you follow these things. We want to make sure the bus is stop your parking brake is set and engine is off to auxiliary you're going to turn on your hazard lights you uh, will stand and, and you're going to open face the passenger and you're going to say okay we need to get out of the bus and you'll announce that um, students need to evacuate and then drivers walk to the rear of the bus checking between and under all seats remember every time your your uh, bus empties you need to drive walk to the back of your bus and make sure everybody is gone and and vacated the bus um, and not just at a, a school bus or another facility that you've gone travel to but during emergency evacuations as well um, please whenever you are doing an imagine executing an emergency emergency evacuation uh, the driver needs to carry off the fire extinguisher, the first aid kit, any reflectors. Make sure your students are at a safe distance. And then you're going to need to set out those or reflectors as necessary. So that's just something we want you to be aware of and, and know that that is something you can fall back on as far as the emergency evacuation. But make sure it is safely um, secured, the bus is, and that your students are safely secured. Um, this is our special students um, area. And uh, the special students, they're going to be needing to take care of um, uh, something that probably will not be very relevant to, to you. Um, we do have wheelchair procedures and em emergency evacuation of special needs students. So we're just going to kind of roll through that. But I do want to skip up to page 13, um, which is section number 17, and that is the fuel and DEF. Now, listen, uh, I do want you to be aware of that. Uh, we try to make sure that whenever you're getting ready to do a bus, um, the fuel and DEF, it is your responsibility to, um, uh, to make sure that the bus is properly fueled. Um, failure to properly fuel any district-owned vehicle may, be, may lead to disciplinary action. Um, what we mean by that is please don't leave the school bus, uh, school bus yard and, um, and realize that you've gone to, say, Stephenville or wherever that case may be and um, realize, oh, my gosh, um, I'm not going to have enough fuel to get back. Um, please, that is your responsibility to make sure in your pre-trip inspection that it has been fueled. We will try to make sure it is taken care of before you get there. But um, please make sure you've inspected that particular item as well. And please know that uh, especially you are not to leave the bus with it unless it's got at least half a t leave the bus yard, excuse me, unless it's got at least a half a tank of fuel and a half a tank of DEF. And some of our school buses are DEF um, 
It's called diesel exhaust uh, fluid, um, and and we do have another fl uh, tank. And we'll teach you all of where to look at for these type of things. There are gauges right there in your instrument panel. But uh, anything goes below a half a tank, um, I would really encourage you, uh, not encourage you, um, you really need to understand that it is required that you bring that attention to dispatch, even if you're just going from Mansfield Timberview to um, Lake Ridge. Anytime it's below a half a tank, you need to bring that to everybody's attention. Now let's talk about accidents. And this is something that uh, we want to make sure and help you understand realize that let's say you are going to um Waxahachie and you are playing them in a particular activity or uh, uh, say basketball or baseball or football or whatever the case may be um and, and you go there and, and you win and you've had a great game and, and uh, boy, everybody's excited and Waxahachie's pretty hot and they're not very happy with you because you've defeated their team. Um, you get in the school bus and you kind of back up and you just barely hit, uh, say, a the, the front, the back end fender of a vehicle of a, of somebody, of, of a parent at Waxahachie. They see that. Um, and you look out and you're like, hey, there's no damage here. There's no big deal. And they say, okay, yeah, don't worry about it. Well, then they pull off and you go on down the road and they go on down their merry way. And they realize that somehow that student, that parent is the student, is the parent of a student on the opposing team. And uh, uh, suddenly they find themselves a little bitter at you and your team. And suddenly they're going to call down here and say, we have a bus that's totally slammed into my car. And they get home and I'm being dramatic here and I hope you understand this. But they get home and they take a sledgehammer to the back of their vehicle and they try to destroy it and damage it. And they're trying to call, they're going to try to claim injuries or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden you have this huge issue all because they're mad because your team defeated their team. If you think that that won't happen, um, I'm sorry to admit this, but humanity as a whole sometimes gets a little petty about things, and, and they want to try to either cash in or create problems for the team or whatever um, the case might be as far as that is concerned. Well, when it comes to accidents and moving violations, this protocol is not to turn you in and to get you in trouble. It is to really protect you so that nobody can claim that there was something more significant and damage or more significant of an issue than what that may have originally been. So we are going to ask you to please, anytime you come into contact with anything, that you contact MISD dispatch immediately or MISD police immediately. Um, I would encourage you, if you don't already have it, um, call 817-299-6000. I know it feels like when you're doing this, you feel like you're going to open yourself up to a reprimand or getting yourself in trouble. And listen, we'll, we'll address any corrections that might need to be made. And it's not going to be as painful as it starts out to be. But we need you to please report any kind of contact that comes into happen, especially when it's out of town. And so if you are involved in an accident anyway, make sure you stop and please don't leave the area. Um, if you stop and leave without reporting it, that is considered a hit and run. And then we get into a whole nother field of legal issues there. But stop immediately. If there's students on the bus, determine if you need to evacuate them. If there's anybody on the bus, make sure nobody is hurt. If, in fact, there's nobody on the bus, then just move on here and truck on down to the th uh, to the next part here. Is this, you're going to turn on your, act your activate your emergency flashers if you need to. Set out your reflective triangles. And, again, as we said here, we're going to radio dispatch or call transportation or MISD police, whatever the case may be. And we're going to say, hey, this is where we're at. What do I need to do from here? Um, whenever you're dialoguing with somebody, we're going to ask you to please not express any opinion. Um, don't uh, try to say, well, you were just uh, uh, driving like a, like a, a crazy bat out of you know what and, and everything is going crazy here and I didn't see you coming. Just state facts. I would encourage you to take pictures of everywhere the the entire area, not just where the contact happened on the school bus, but take the take a picture of the area so that we can see where the car was coming from, where your bus was approaching, and etc. If you have students on your school bus, you need to get a seating chart and write down where every student was sitting on the bus. If there's students that need to go to a hospital, you need to find out the name of that hospital. But again, do not leave the scene of the accident without permission from dispatch or somebody from MISD, especially MISD police, or the um, the the uh, police department from this uh, community that you are um, perhaps that this happened in. Again, 
We're not trying to use this as a as a way to try to find a way to trap you to get you in trouble. We really have a lot of people um, in society that will see MISD on the side of that school bus, and they will try to take advantage of that and see if there's a way that they can uh, uh, leverage some kind of a paycheck out of that. So, well, this is where we're at with this, and we want to protect you. We want to protect the school's interest. We want to protect all the budgets that uh, all of our school dis- all of all of all of our school is requiring to submit. Um, you know, if we're having to pay millions and millions of dollars every school year because of these accidents, that's going to reflect the, and affect the budget for your academic um, classes. It's going to affect the budget on your extracurricular activities. And so this is a way to help us out. We ask that you please uh, observe the accident and moving violation policy as far as that is concerned. And enough on that because I know we won't have any issues as far as your driving is concerned. Um, Please be aware that we have this is all stuff that's going to be relevant to our school bus drivers. We're talking to them. And when, we, when I say our school bus drivers, those who drive a route every day, uh, some of them get to ride, drive summer school, extra duty assignment. Um, field trip procedures for them. All I'm going to bring out here is something that you need to be aware of. Right here, sponsors, children. That could be your children or another assistant coach or whoever. You will not be allowed to bring your children child on a field trip if their weight is between 5 and 40 pounds and their high is between 19 and 40 inches. The reason is that would require a child safety seat, and we do not put child safety seats on our regular education buses. So um, if you or a, 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 an assistant coach or an assistant in your program comes along the way and uh, they want to bring their, their, uh, their child, if they are between 5 and 40 pounds or if they are between 19 and 40 inches, please tell them that legally you just can't do that and it's against policy. Um, and unfortunately, they'll have to just wait until that child uh, kind of grows into their um, bigger bodies later on down the road. This is more things about the field trips right here. And now what I want to get to here is, um, um, and I'm, I'm more than anything, I want to show you this thing right here, and I want you to make sure, again, I highlight um, the phone numbers that I'm going to ask you to put in your phone book. Um, we, If you suspect child abuse and or neglect, and it might become relevant to you as a sponsor of an activity. Um, here is a 1-800 number if you want to make sure you know what that is. But more importantly, um, I want to emphasize these phone numbers need to be in your phone. MISD Police, again, for accidents. Dispatch, if you have any questions, you're out on the road. Um, 817-299-6060 for dispatch. MISD Police, 817-299-6000. Uh, those are a couple of th- numbers that you just need to have handy for you. Most of the time when you're going to be after hours, you're going to be coming into contact with MISD Police. And anytime if you have a bus that breaks down, a minor accident, any kind of issues whatsoever, that's who you call and they will in turn go down their um, chain of command to figure out who they need to make contact with and help you out and get the service that you need as far as that is concerned okay Um, we have a specific policy for employees and children and guests and that's really nothing relevant to you we do have a radio that you can use um, and that's just mainly from bus to bus if you say have four or five buses um, if you're a football coach you'll have a pretty good group or let's say you're uh, a uh, driving a band um uh, that has three or four buses you can talk bus to bus and and visit on or be able to communicate that way but i do want to talk about personal radios and cell phones and this is another area where we have seen some violations with coaches in the past um, if you are um, operating a school bus you cannot use any wireless communication device of any kind that includes the bluetooth earless or excuse me wireless head uh, earphones um, anything like that um, talking and using your phone while driving Driving a school bus is completely illegal, and uh, it is a finable offense. So, as and and as really, if you think about it, just picking up your phone and looking at just the time to see uh, how far off schedule you are, and putting your phone back down, that is using a wireless device. And we've had people um, who are more than glad to call in um, and report those violations. And I'm talking about um, motorists who drive around you. Uh, they really do um, feel compelled to to help society out by reporting any kind of violations and so please just keep whenever you're driving a bus just keep that cell phone put up Um, we do want you to take your cell phone with you Um, 
If it does that you occurs that you need to use your cell phone, we ask that you make sure that, especially in emergency, that you pull the bus over to the side of the road in a safe spot, engage the parking brake. Um, I'll ask you to even go ahead and turn on your four-way hazard flashers and then use your cell phone. But never use your cell phone while the bus is in motion uh, as far as that is concerned. Anytime that you are using any driving any kind of school-owned vehicle, you are required to wear a seat belt. Um, and that includes our school buses, our suburban bourbons, our mini buses. Um, later on, we will have some activity buses that you need to be aware of that you'll get some extra um, exposure to, but always wear a seatbelt whenever you're driving a school bus. And then here we have a couple other things here that I just want to, you, you already know about school closures and how to get all that stuff uh, concerned. But let's talk about the video surveillance cameras one more time, making sure that you know that you do have those to fall back on if you ever needed to do an, an accident or excuse me, some kind of an investigation. Um, regarding that also please know that uh, um, we do have people calling us saying hey we did see this bus driver using a cell phone and we can pull up the video there and we can observe that yeah you did uh, you you were using a cell phone and so and then if somebody says you were using a felt cell phone and it's they're falsely accusing you that video can come back and protect you as well and we can prove that that person making that report was was wrong but we also want to make sure that you remember not to tamper or touch the cameras or the camera equipment or any Thing like that. Well, folks, that's going to do it for uh, module two, and that is the MISD handbook, ha uh, handbook transportation handbook um, for coaches. I know that was just all kinds of excitement for you, but it is very relevant information. We want you to be aware of, of what we um, are asking our drivers to submit to. I hope it was helpful information for you. We will have a quiz for this later on down the road, um, so hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of that and, and uh, be all the more prepared to drive your students in the Mansfield Independent School District safely from point A to point B and we thank you for paying attention to this presentation.